Hello, thought I'd give you a demo of GNOME running on a phone. This is on a uh, OnePlus 6T with a nice plain white case on it so I don't break it. And uh, the only difference from, well first of all this is GNOME Shell with an, um, some experimental patches that have not been merged yet but are in testing um, to run on a phone form factor. Um, the only change that I've made to the experimental like GNOME Shell layout is that I have, because it's GNOME shell, you can use an extension. So I have a GNOME extension that is putting the clock on the left to avoid the uh, notch cutout here because GNOME shell doesn't know about notches yet. So other than that, this is the uh, experimental GNOME shell branch. Um, first, I'm gonna go over, I guess first we can show you the basic sort of shell layout. Um, you've got your top bar on the top, just like on the desktop. You've got quick settings here. On this image, it requires like a double pull down. I'm not sure if that's an implementation thing or a bug or what, um, but you swipe down once and it kind of pops down there and you swipe it down. Um, and this is the GNOME quick settings that you might be familiar with from on the desktop. So it all works, I mean, basically the same. Um, you've got your expandable Wi-Fi networks. Uh, you've got your screenshot user user interface here, so you can do this, or you could say just take a picture of the whole screen. Uh, your sound effects are exactly the same as on the desktop. Um, that actually is a good example. It shows you notifications. Um, so if I take this screenshot, you can either swipe it completely away, or I believe swiping up is supposed to make it stay in the notification area, but I'm not sure. Um, I might have that wrong. Uh, let's go over here using this app as a checklist here. Um, so yeah, apps, oh, so yeah, an interesting thing from my perspective is that uh, on the home screen here, even with nothing open, when you first log in, first unlock your phone, when you close everything, you get apps. And so the, this actually is really similar to what we've done on Endless OS. Um, we've actually put the apps on the desktop effectively. Uh, and then when you close all your apps, you go back to a screen with the apps on the desktop. Um, we don't have like a separate overview kind of mode. Uh, and that's actually really similar to what we have here. So I thought that was interesting. Um, let's go back to paper here. So we have uh, the navigation in general. So you, you have swipe navigation, which you might be familiar with from like Android or iOS. That's uh, similar here, similar idea of just a swipe to go home. Um, but what's nice is you also do get the uh, let's open a second app here, clocks. You also get the like quick gesture to kind of swipe over to another app. Um, you can't do it, well, I guess you can. Just swipe straight on the, the bar. Yeah, that does work. Okay, that wasn't working for me other earlier, but I think that was a bug. Um, so again, if you're used to that on like mobile um, platforms like Android or iOS, that kind of me muscle memory comes over, which is nice. Um, same thing with, you know, pulling down for your notifications and Quick toggles is really similar to both mobile platforms. Um, the keyboard, it's, it really wants to pop up and open here every time I focus this window. Um, it's kind of nice that you just have a swipe gesture to go down. Um, I think you don't get that on other platforms because they have like swiped text. So there's, I guess, advantages and disadvantages. Um, but yeah, I guess here is a look at the quick toggles. Let's show you the uh, the dark style quick toggle does what you'd expect. It's nice, it does the little fade. Um, kind of interestingly, because these are live previews of Windows here, if you open a few few more apps. I also like, I like the little animation that like animates the app icon to like a full screen thing. It's kind of nice. Um, gives you nice expectations. First of all, oh my gosh, that's so smooth. Look how smooth this is, so good. But yeah, these are live previews of Windows, so like if you switch, um, oops, let's do it from the overview. If you switch to light and dark style, these update, these all update live. So an ex another good example of that is if I open web, <clears throat> excuse me, if I open web and I'm on a blog post with an animation, that's cool, it remembered the zoom and everything, wow. Um, this is on my blog, this is a nice animation for the toolbox website by Jakob. Um, so if you've got something that's animated here and you swipe, swipe up, 
like most platforms like Android, I think, and I think iOS, um, when you swipe away from that, it will pa it would pause that animation because it would no longer be drawing. But here you can see it's still like a live window. So there's an advantages and disadvantages. Um, yeah, again, it's kind of nice that when you do a dark style, it all updates, but it means that all these windows are drawing all the time, I think, um, which could have an impact on performance and uh, battery life and all that. Um, so let's look back at my checklist here. Quick toggles, navigation. Yeah, there's no like swipe to go back like on Android. It's more like iOS where it depends on the app. Um, like in this app, there's just a little carrot icon up at the top to go back. Um, which, by the way, this is uh, paper. This is really nice. Really nice app. Let me switch back to light style. It works better on camera here. Uh, this is paper. Nice app. Uh, you can see this is the Libidueta, um about dialogue or about window. It's another thing that's interesting. I would kind of expect these dialogues to go full screen instead of kind of looking like a floating window, but not behaving like a floating window. Um, there's... You can definitely tell there's like some leftover stuff in either GTK or GNOME Shell or I'm not sure that is kind of in the in-between between a mobile OS and a desktop OS. Um, another example is like context menus can be weird sometimes. Well, not, here's not a good example. I'll show you in files. So like this just feels really desktopy to me. I think maybe it's partially because there's like a shift control N shortcut. There's no keyboard. Like, I don't have a physical keyboard. This doesn't make sense to me to show this stuff. Um, and just this menu presentation itself just looks very desktopy because it is. Um, so I almost wonder if context menus should have a different mode on smaller screens um, and how that should be determined, or maybe if there's not a precise pointer input, if touch is the primary input, then it should present differently, or if it was if you used touch to activate it. I'm not sure, but I feel like maybe we could do something smarter with context menus. And then here again, oh, here's a good example of when the floating window paradigm gets weird. Um, yeah, there's a window behind here that I'm kind of moving with the child window, and I can maximize it by dragging it up. Um, it just feels weird that this looks like a window and it's not like a full screen view. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to mess with permissions. Um, otherwise, another thing I found is that the default columns really truncate the crap out of everything if you uh and you can't resize them easily there's no like visible way to resize them um well i guess then you scroll sideways which that is fine uh back here's over here um that's another thing with context menus is like they seem like over aggressive like you press and hold to show them which makes sense but then sometimes when you're like doing a gesture like trying to rubber band select the um context menus come up so there's maybe some refinement to be done there. Um, yeah, interesting stuff there. Uh, this view works nicely. I did have to change it to um, single, single click to open by default, which again, maybe this should be smarter with touch input and it should just take a single touch versus a double click on a pointer. Um, yeah, I'm used to single click on the desktop too, so I just changed it here, but Double click doesn't really work on touch. Um, like, you kind of have to like, <laughs> and I just extracted something. Um, so yeah, that's, and this is this is the uh, alpha version of file. So maybe there's some, some bug that I don't know about, but yeah, it seems interesting. There's maybe some better defaults that could be set. Um, and yeah. But that is files. Uh, okay, I should go back to my script because I'm already at like 10 minutes here. Uh, oh, and I don't have it. Paper. Um, yeah, keyboard. You've got an emoji keyboard. Um, no search in here, which would be nice to have, although I know that's really complicated. Um, and the layout might be a little weird because of the screen size and resolution. This is a OnePlus 6T with, just, you know, whatever random size and resolution combination. Um, but generally the keyboard feels really nice. Um, it definitely like is snappy. Um, you get your nice gnome sounds. It's an older one, but um, it technically supports multi-touch. So if like you hold on the shift key and type, 
Won't be touch. It's kind of nice. I think, and I mistyped multi-touch, but I think also pressing and holding the shift key like makes it stay or something. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe if you start typing with it, I'm not sure. Or like, yeah, now it's staying. So I don't know, but it does definitely seem like like if you're typing like it, uh, the multi-touch works pretty well. Um, okay, let's, and then you can swipe to dismiss, tap on a text field and it opens. It's pretty reliable. Uh, there's not a way to manually open it, so if your app doesn't quite do the right thing, you kind of get stuck sometimes, but that's more of an app problem. Um, yeah, let's look at some core apps. I already kind of showed you some of these, but let's look at clocks, calculator files. I already showed you files, so let's get rid of that. Clocks, oops. Um, clocks is like one of the best examples of a mobile adapted app. Um, it just seems to like work. This is clocks 43. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it just seems to generally work. I don't think I have found anywhere. And you get this kind of like, it's weird that this is a floating window, but let's add, oh, now here's an example. Aha, uh -huh. keyboard not coming up. I'm not sure why. Here. Hmm. Yeah, so you kind of get stuck sometimes like this. Again, this is all like pre-release software. Oh, hey, I can pull, that's, okay. I did an emoji input and then so the emoji input is, okay, that's weird. Yeah. Some of this is, uh, it's, it's pre-release software, but generally the Clocks app seems to be pretty well adapted to, to mobile. Um, yeah, I like, like having this view. Like you could definitely see this being like a you know, nightstand sort of clock going on here. Um, you can see Libidwida really shining there with the, the navigation. Um, yeah, that's Clocks. Uh, calculator so again there's some weirdness with text input here of like because you can do text input in calculator which makes sense on a computer um the keyboard like aggressively tries to pop up like it tries to focus this all the time even though you might just want to be able to you know mash on the keyboard here um but yeah i also love that the accent color comes through on the text selection and the button here and then you know, like in the about dialog um but i love i love that it does it on the text selection like that's so that's so nice that was an interesting like i don't know why i can type letters here I mean, i'm sure there's maybe a reason but um yeah there's something weird with that edge of that but text input works when it works well it works really well i like the little um magnification there and it's really actually like a crisp magnification so that's nice um but then this is where you hit some weird edge cases of like, you go, okay, programming works fine. Which was it? Financial. It's like, okay, now this window is bigger than the screen. Um, so then you can drag it, which makes sense to be able to get over here to touch the stuff. But like, I feel like that should just not be possible. <laughs> uh, and that, I guess that's an app issue of like, the app needs to be better laid out to you know, maybe move some of these functions up above the buttons. And actually I would probably do that in the basic an advanced case anyway is like make these bigger you don't this is all history up here like yeah i'm not variable okay how do i backspace um whatever this is all history up here which is nice to have but it feels like it takes up like the majority of the screen whereas the buttons could be quite a bit bigger for touch friendliness um even though they're they're like they're fine they're at like the minimum size for touch input but anyway, I digress. There's always work to be done. Um, but yeah, this shows you kind of some of the weird edge cases. Um, let's see. What else did I say? We looked at, oh, let's get a web. Yeah, web is pretty good. Um, this is the alpha pre-release, whatever, nightly version of web. Um, I really, really love it. Um, it's got like, well, no, of course it's not going to do it. Maybe these are broken in this build. Okay, yeah, I thought you could swipe to go back, but maybe not right now. But multi-touch works really well. Um, generally, like, dark style, light style stuff works great. Um, what else? 
preferences. Again, a case of a floating window being kind of weird, but like the adaptable window works well here. Um, the reader mode is really cool. Actually, if you actually let's go to a blog post and then hit the reader mode. So this will actually load it in a, a more reader friendly format, which my blog is already actually pretty reader friendly to start. But in case you found a website that wasn't mobile friendly or wasn't easy to read, this is actually really nice. Um, you get inline graphics and links and everything with high contrast styling and it also supports the dark style. So um, I could definitely see like there's a much better distraction free experience on a lot of websites than what they ship. Um, but I think my, my blog, oop, well there's some overlapping the video embed there. Um, generally this is pretty readable though <clears throat> and I support a, uh, a higher contrast style too. So anyway um, yeah, you have your, um, let's go back to light style. Yeah, it wants to aggressively pop up because it's focusing the um, text input up there. But you've got your tabs, instead of a tab bar at the top, it kind of collapses down here. Um, bookmarks and stuff down here. I haven't signed in to sync, so that's not syncing. But um, yeah, generally, GNOME Web on mobile works pretty well, actually. Uh, what else we got? Files, web, settings. So yeah, settings is interesting. Sometimes, why is it running in the background? Oh, I'll worry about that later. Uh, sometimes settings, depending on the pane you go into, will overlap the window size. Um, here you can see I'm on the 6T and post-market OS, running Wayland, all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's. I'm also not sure when you're supposed to be able to swipe back and when you aren't. Uh, it seems like if you're using it weight, lipid data and doing everything right, you should be able to swipe back anytime you have this sort of slide over um, experience. But I feel like some apps don't do that. And I'm not sure why. Maybe they're not using lipid data um, or lib handy if it's GTK3. Um, an example of like if we go to displays, you can see like this window now became bigger than my screen and so now it overlaps and then if I go back it doesn't like doesn't resize back down which is weird um, but if I I don't think I can like manually resize it down I can resize it up but if I close it and reopen it then it like reloads without that settings pane loaded so then it's fine um, but yeah growing pains I'm sure it's stuff we'll figure out Um, appearance is nice. You get your light and dark. It's your repaired wallpapers. So if you want a nice dark wallpaper and an even darker wallpaper, looks actually really nice. I might keep that as my default. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else can I show? Um, there's some stuff in here that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Which again, this is. I don't know what the solution is to this. Sorry. Uh, but like showing hot corner and active edges on a phone screen doesn't really make sense. But if you were going to use this, if you could plug into a desktop and use it, then it, you would want to be able to change these settings. So maybe there's some work here to say multitasking for desktop mode and explain what that means. If we detect it, you're on mobile somehow. Um, you're like all this workspace stuff doesn't make sense with this layout. But you, if you plug in, I believe this does do like convergence. Like it will export if your device supports it. Um, it'll export over USB or HDMI to a screen and then it'll actually do like a whole normal desktop mode. I mean, you have display settings in here where you can select your orientation and scaling factor and everything like you'd expect. Oops. Um, okay, well, I'm almost 20 minutes here. So some third-party apps are really like, really like Amberall. Um, MNLA did this simple local music player app. I'm going to make sure my volume's down so I don't get copyright struck here. Um, but yeah, it's uh, generally pretty cool. I found this bug every once in a while where popovers don't show up in GTK apps. Um, not sure what that is. And also that like sliders, oh now it's being fine. Sometimes sliders were being really laggy on me, but now it's being fine. So, uh, And then here's a fun one. So this window is slightly too wide. So it pushes the close button off, and uh, then if you drag, it tries to move the window. 
Um, that's just a bug in the app, but yeah, it seems interesting that that's possible to move the window from this list of songs. Um, but then if you go back, it like resizes the window for you. So I don't know if Mutter is doing something special in this build to try to always make apps snap to the screen if they can. Um, this is another good example of an app with like a beautiful light and dark style. It adapts to the wall, or the uh, the cover art of the the album, but also yeah. <laughs> um, but also like we'll go to light and dark mode. I like the light and dark style. Uh, here's a good example of notifications. You can swipe them away, which is nice. You can hit clear, so they go away. That's really nice. Um, yeah. Uh, other third party apps. Uh, I might skip some of these, but the idea was, I showed you paper, it's this app. The idea is like, these, these third party apps are actually really nice. Um, Blanket is a little sound machine, so you can like, make your own, make sure to, yeah, pause that. I love having Empress integration here, but um, you can make your own white noise, whatever, combine these things. Uh, you can add custom sounds, you can add white noise behind it. So yeah, here's an example of, like, why? I don't know. Oh, the whole app maybe is frozen. Okay. Uh, most of these apps are really nice, though. I'm not going to show you maps because I don't want to show my location. Um, drawing is an example of an app I don't think I've played with. Loading, loading, loading. Ah, yeah. So here is a problem. Um, you can install apps that are not made for mobile, and maybe this is a solved thing in GNOME software um, in future versions. But if you install an app that's not made for mobile, like you're just dumped into this like desktop that sometimes you can't really do what you need to do. Like I can't move this window. Um, I don't even know what this whole thing says. I just can say no and then try to move this window, and but it's too big to maximize, I guess. But I can try to resize it down as small as it'll go. Oh, and then it maximized. Okay, so yeah, there's some weird interactions here, some window manager stuff, but yeah, and then again, like, I can't close this actually, so then you kind of get stuck. Um, so I can just try to close the whole app. I guess that's what you do. Um, and then, let's see. I think that's about all I was gonna show. But yeah, overall, it's really exciting. Like the shell work is incredible. This is, it's so smooth. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed with, with all of this. Uh, you can really see how this, you know, I really love this layout on a desktop. I think it works really well. It's very like visually appealing and easy to use. But you can definitely see where it shines on mobile. I'm being able to pull this down, um, jump into. I, I love that you have a screenshot shortcut there. So like, if you want to take a screenshot of your desktop, you can say, "Take a screenshot," and it like, it's just nice. Like um, having having these buttons all right here just makes a lot of sense. Uh, Do not disturb right there makes a lot of sense. Um, you can lock your screen. I can show you the lock screen, I guess. It does take a second, <clears throat> maybe, or maybe I end the video here. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, so this this can be smooth, but there we go. I think when it tries to pop the keyboard up at the same time, it gets kind of laggy. But type my password off screen here. log back in. So uh, I don't know if there's like a pin pin entry in GNOME Shell, if that would have to be added. Ah, oh, you can see my um, extension to move the clock broke. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but yeah, overall I'm really impressed with like just how smooth this is, how much this just desktop paradigm makes sense. Um, really great work from Tobias on the design side and I know Jonas and I'm not sure who else has been implementing this, but like really great work. Um, it's really impressive stuff. Just like being able to swipe over and how smooth it feels. Um, yeah, really, really good work. Oh, I didn't show you type search. I mean, that's, that's something I would search. 
software. I guess something with more results is more interesting. It's like this layout actually works really well here. It feels a lot like um, like Spotlight on uh, iOS or like a better version of the <laughs> Google Pixel search experience. Um, you know, you get apps, apps up at the top and you get deep search within settings and other apps down here. Makes a lot of sense. Um, again, I'm gonna make sure volume is down here. Oh, this is Lollipop. I haven't actually used Lollipop, but apparently it knows about my music. Interesting. Huh. Um, and something I haven't put my SIM card in or anything, so I have not used the like chat and call apps. Um, they look like they're GTK3, or at least not Libidweta. So, um, yeah, those feel like those should be updated. But, yeah, it's in a really interesting state. I don't know that I would daily drive this. Um, I don't think anybody's telling you to daily drive this, but I think you theoretically could if you were okay with um, generally buggy edge cases every once in a while. Um, but I definitely, I got this OnePlus 6T as, a, uh, as an experiment to be able to test my own apps. Um, as you can see, they, they don't work so well on mobile right now. <clears throat> um, yeah, I've got a better feeling about this. That's appropriate. And to be, so I wanted to do some work on my apps to make them mobile friendly. And I also was just curious to see like what my uh, friends and colleagues are working on in, in the mobile space here. So, all right, this has been your way too long 26 minute, 27 minute overview of GNOME shell on mobile. Uh, let me know in the comments, I guess, if there's anything specific you want to see, and I will try to um, share it on my Mastodon, which is blady.family slash Cassidy James. That's B L A E D E dot family slash Cassidy James. Um, and I'll put a link to that in the video description too. Okay, I should probably do some short versions of this because this was super long, but. Uh, talk to you all later.